Hey, welcome to The Crux. In this video, we will discuss about the history of the genetic code. So it is 1953, and the structure of DNA has just been discovered by Watson and Crick. The DNA has a double helix structure, and is made up of four nucleobases, adenine, thiamine, cytosine, and guanine. Another piece of key information in context of genetic code that the scientists know is that proteins are made up of 20 amino acids. Since proteins are made in the cell, the scientists hypothesized that the genetic or the hereditary unit of life, that is, the DNA, must be responsible for making proteins, and also because proteins are the workhorses of the cell. So the question that puzzled scientists after the discovery of DNA is how is information transmitted or converted from DNA to proteins? So again, just to reiterate, three key pieces of information that scientists knew at the time was that DNA is a double helix. It has four nucleobases, A, T, G, and C, and there are about 20 amino acids. So scientists thought about it, and the most reasonable initial deductions were as the following. First, there cannot be a single base code, because we have four bases, and that gives only four amino acid maximum, but we have 20 amino acids. Second, there cannot be a double base code, because that gives 16 possible codes. So we're short of four amino acids. So the key deduction was that there could be a triplet base code, because that gives 64 possible codes, which could result in 64 potential amino acids, but there are only 20. So this code at least can generate 20 amino acids. And since nature works to optimize resources, it would appear reasonable that a three base code is favored and not a four or a five or a higher base code, where you have more possible codes and therefore a higher redundancy. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please click like, comment, and share this video. And don't forget to subscribe for more content. See you in the next video.